Oh, Kenny. Okay. Wonderful. One of my uh, few talents, I can press our record button. <laughs> shall we? Shall we get going? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go. Tom. Stage is yours today. You're the big man in here. So I'm a big man on campus for a few seconds. Okay. So <laughs> welcome to the 12th of January, 2023, Hyperledger Supply Chain and Trade Finance Special Interest Group. Sorry, we got going a little bit late here with a little mix up. Uh, for once, it wasn't us. <laughs> so uh, we'll get that straightened out for the next time we have a session here. Thanks for uh, joining here uh, either live or in uh, listening to the recording here. Uh, what we thought we'd do today between uh, myself, Eric, Andrea, we've talked a couple times over the holidays, Alicia, when she's able to join us here in a second. Um, we put out a survey, what was it, right before Christmas, I believe, to try to get, gain some input from uh, folks on where we should go. If you remember back in, when was it? I guess early December, we had talked about what, what get, 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 trying to get some ideas of where, where we could add value beyond webinars in the new year. And there were some thoughts around use cases or some thoughts around governance or some thoughts around what was the last one, Eric? Oh, beautiful. You're going right where I'm going to throw it to you, man. That's great. So anyways, we had, we had this little survey. Eric put it together here using fancy Zoho technology. And no, no blockchain in there, Eric? You're on mute. You're on mute, Eric. You're really on mute. It's going to be hard to throw it to you. I, I was off at two screens. So I was looking for the unmute button on both. <laughs> we're all we're all getting rock and rolling here at the beginning of the year here, getting our brain going and everything. So Eric, you want to take us through? Oh, we got 17 uh, answered now. And 18. 18. Okay, that that's good. So in, in just in the interest of full disclosure here, we had we had a goal of we were talking 25, 40, but you know the reality is we wanted to have enough responses so that. It was something that was relevant as opposed to, you know, we got three people responding. And then just for to kind of give you numbers, we got 107 people that are on the uh, SIG mailing list. Obviously, we have, want to get more people. And we put, put it also out on LinkedIn. I think, Andrea, you did that a couple of days ago um, because we got a bigger audience. I don't know how big is the audience on LinkedIn, Andrea, a few hundred, right? Like oh, that. it's uh, 3,500, something like this, more or less. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah, it's quite that, a lot. That, that sounds like a lot of people, man. 3,000. So, so Don't hopefully. Don't tell me. Can... It's been my part time job for the last two years to build there this. You go. There you go. And that, that, that is good. So, we, so we have a lot of people, especially now that we're getting it out. Hopefully, we'll get some more responses on this. Eric, you want to take us through what we have so far here? And I don't know if we can make some final determinations today, but let's take this and then I guess what makes sense to me, Eric and Andrea, is let's go around the horn and see what people's thoughts are from that. What do we take away from it? Absolutely. Let's go with that. Eric, you want to share the, share the results with us so far? Yeah. So uh, on screen are uh, the results of this survey that we put out a bit before the holidays. And uh, for those who did uh, send uh, submit an answer, thank you very much for your input. Uh, it is all about the community, right? And so that's what we wanted to do is reach out to the community to see what the community wanted us as the SIG leadership, I guess you want to call us or the, the SIG a bunch of clowns here. Um, to, to, to work on and to focus on uh, moving forward. Uh, so uh, again, yeah, we did, we did get a bit of answers and we threw out a few examples or a few suggestions, uh, but not limited to. First one was to, again, look at what use cases were out there. Uh, so either uh, working on a specific use case or surveying the use cases. So what are people working on? Is it agri? Is it traceability? Is it uh, trade finance? Is it something else? Uh, second uh, suggestion that we gave was uh, governance, best practices. I know Tom is very much involved in that. And uh, um, 
with the uh, the bad news about trade lens uh and sorry if I'm throwing anybody on the bus here but the bad news that trade lens was closing down we wanted to look at governance it was that was it a governance issue um what are people looking at uh, at uh, in the governance uh sphere of interest out there and the third was standards a lot of people are working on a whole bunch of different standards I'm involved in ISO, Tom's involved in IEEE, uh, you have DSCA, you have uh, GSBN that has their stuff, you have a whole bunch of different people working on a whole bunch of different standards. So how do you reconcile all of those standards as it relates to supply chain and blockchain? Uh, so that being said, uh, most people, and yes, you could vote uh on on many uh different or you could give many uh different answers which explains uh these numbers here not equaling 18 uh but most people want to work with 65 percent on governance uh, the other one is second uh, place is uh, use cases standards and we had a couple of others which I can bring up on screen here uh, emissions, uh, which is something that we have talked about in the past for sure. Um, business process mapping, I think, is another cool one. And um, third, let's create a use case that which connects the movement of goods and services with the movements of money in supply chain. Very interesting concept for sure. Um, so that being said, uh, you know, we're still open to suggestions, open to uh, more answers. We'll keep the survey open maybe a couple of weeks, Tom, still, until our, our next uh, internal meeting. What do you think? Yeah, I think we if we got 3,000 people, we can we can drive it out a little bit stronger on LinkedIn, hopefully. Yeah. And, you know, maybe, maybe if we got 3,000, I think getting 100 responses would actually be a reasonable goal. I mean, that, that feels to me, I mean, I'm open to other people, but we get, a, I mean, I'm glad we almost got 20. Let's go to a hundred and let's see yeah. what we get. Yeah. So, that should be the good percentage. Let's re reshare. Let's propose also in our own profiles to drive, you say people towards this. This could be a good strategy. Good. Well, Danny, yes, we have 3,459 followers exactly. Does that mean everybody goes on LinkedIn every day like us? Probably not. Does that <laughs> mean that like me, uh, their brains are not back from holidays yet? Probably so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, but let's push it out on, on uh, the email. Let's push it out on uh, LinkedIn maybe a couple more times. That's kind of what I'm thinking here. Uh, that sounds good. What about uh, from other folks that are on here? You know, anything surprise you? Not surprise you? Interested in your uh, your opinions uh, out there? Sophie, I on Jeff at the Federal Reserve who can't show himself, etc. Yeah, that's right. I did have a question though on uh, some of the projects. Are you looking for um, corporate partners in this? Is that a, a use case where you're trying to find a company that would become a corporate, pound, corporate and, a partner to demonstrate a use case? And actually, any of these, uh, there could be a, a corporate partner, whether that's Hyperledger or outside of the Hyperledger community, okay. that would help us do this. Um, I, I guess in trade, trade finance um, would be a, possibly a, a I don't know, maybe not a development bank, but an NGO or somebody. Is that... Oh, I would rather say development bank, Jeff, to be honest. Okay. We should be seeking for the NGOs. Hmm, that sounds more supply chain stuff. But if you want, if you glance if you want to glance at some merely financial stuff, development banks, they have a good fit. And I think okay. if you're in Washington, DC, that could be the place. That's what the World Bank is. It's many more institutions. And when we spoke with Alfonso, if you remember, guys, by the way, in November, he mentioned that we should be sticking to the projects led by all those entities driven by world banks and development banks, because they're a major thing in South America, in Africa, in core areas, what we would love to focus on. 
And, and I'll throw out Jeff along that line. This is uh, Tom Klein. Uh, so as, as Eric mentioned, I'm very involved in governance. I've been a very active member of the IEEE P 2145 Blockchain Governance uh, Standard Committee. And we've come out, we've finished up our initial set of work and we're going through now the approval process with inside of IEEE. So we got a document that's pretty much ready to go oh, um, interesting. here. So, so, so we're, we're happy with that uh, portion. Now, um, I was just on a call on Tuesday. We're looking, okay, where can we apply this and confirm that it actually has, has some validity? Um, so I, we, there's a couple people that are on the committee, a professor from Tuskegee Institute and a guy from out uh, who has a lot of experience with su drug supply chains over in Basel. Uh, the three of us, we worked on a, a uh, reverse logistics use case that we dreamed up basically around t-shirts and you know how do you how do you how do you return t-shirts so they end up basically in landfills and we, we time box it we didn't build, build it out a whole way but basically build out a take to the use case and try to apply blockchain governance our standard to it now we also would like to do that to examples where blockchain governance maybe was already done it could be the trade lens example as you know something you know the counterfactual right that didn't quite work out for whatever reason or it's ASX or what whatever out there or ones that actually did work out. So um, the group at IEEE when I, we were on a call on Tuesday, I mentioned that we're looking for you know governance is one of the things that may be of interest, and so the offer from that group at IEEE is to work together with us if we choose governance to find a corporate member like you're saying, Jeff, or a couple of corporates that have blockchain instances and build it out. Or we could even take it. So that's one path. The other path is if there's some use case that we believe will really bring this forward, then like reverse logistics, we just pick that one as something we hadn't seen anybody do anything on. Right. Mm -hmm. Or it could be a trade finance thing, whatever, whatever's out there. Right. So hopefully that does that make sense, Jeff? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I, OK, good information. Thanks. Good. And I guess I'll add one other thing here. Unfortunately, enterprise blockchain, the, 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 the words haven't been very positive in the media recently. Uh, <laughs> every day I get a, I get a new one in my Google alert that I have set for uh, blockchain. You know about <laughs> hey, you know, trade lens didn't happen. If everyone's for, kind of forgotten about we dot trade, etc. Uh, there's still positive things going out there. We just got to ferret it, ferret it out. And I'll tell you on the governance thing, the biggest thing we we can figure out or we could bring to the table is how does governance be a catalyst? Because gutter governance and Sophia, you might be able to say this, uh, or maybe not. You know, governance is usually after the fact, as opposed to how does it, how do you use it to actually get a blockchain project going uh, there. So that, that's just insight from the governance work that I've done so far. So let me shut up and uh, see who else wants to uh, share their thoughts. Ayan, would you like to uh, share your thoughts on what you see here up on the screen? Yeah. Oh, yes. But when you when you have opened the other uh, so show the three responses. I have noticed my, <laughs> I remember the, my responses and the, that, that is, that is the, the last one. Uh, let's create the use cases between the movement of the goods and the services with the, <laughs> with the movement of the money. That, that is the, my responses indeed. And the, that is quite important when I think of the, the anti ant world. And the, we need to make a, a strict connection with the existent world and the, with the enterprise solution. And that, that, that is the crucial point in, in which in my mind, I'm trying to solve indeed. That's, that's, that's why I'm always looking for the best uh, user experiences, but at the end, at the end, each solutions should depend on the movement of the money. Uh, if we do not touch that concept, uh, I cannot move myself further to create the further use cases for myself. Indeed, and that's 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 why 
it's quite important for me. It, and one other point which I would like to raise that as far as I know that uh, SAP is already a partner of the Linux Foundation. And the, I wish to hold and to listen their supply chain uh, solutions based on, as far as I know, Hyperledger, uh, SAP, Ariba. I, I guess it is the supply chain solution of the SAP. And the, we wish to, I wish to personally learn what that SAP would bring uh, more idea, more practical uh, things in our SA, uh, SIG. Uh, that, 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 that's why in the recent days, I'm following up the uh, Taulia. Uh, which is the U.S. Uh, company owned by the SAP, and they are the good. They are making the good things regarding the invoice financing, discountable financing, and that's why I'm trying to understand the uh, today's world on the base of the enterprise solution of the Hyperledger. Just trying to make a kind of the bridges between the X world and the new world, indeed. Uh, but the, we we will, I, as far as I understand, depending on my experience, that we will we will still rely on the our today's world's tools for the coming periods. That's why uh, we are in the between the two periods, and the, but still we need to make the some kind of the constant bridges between the, these two worlds. I'm not sure whether whether which I helped express myself or not, but I do totally support the uh, supply chain and the trade finance special interest group uh, from Istanbul, Turkey. And the, uh, I do love you guys. Thank you for all. Thanks, Ayan. So, so my takeaway from that is try to, tr if we, if we go, do go down the use case path, try to have something that has both flavors, the supply chain, actually moving the physical goods as well as the money that gets moved with it. All right, thank you. Right, okay, good. Okay. Um, let's see, who else is on here? Jean, you're, you're welcome to join, to share your thoughts if you'd like. Maybe introduce yourself. I, I just very uh, only a minute ago joined. Do you hear me? We, we can hear you, yes. Okay, oh, that's good. Um, yes, a brief introduction of myself. My background is, uh, oh, sorry, I still show my, the video as well. Uh, so you can see me. Um, now, a brief introduction. My, my background is 30 years in trade finance, uh, both in, in product sales and in um, uh, covering from a bank perspective. Um, I um, uh, worked for ING for, the, uh, for, for 30 years in each time in trade finance roles and uh, client coverage roles. Um, I left the organization um, uh, after a joyful uh, career. And um, I'm now looking around again for um, becoming active in the trade finance domain. And as such, I'm uh, looking for um, opportunities. Um, and what I try to do and what I, I'm very fond of with thanks to uh, Francino is uh, to stay uh, a bit um, in touch with the developments, especially on the digitization and on the, on the compliance side because that is really going uh, with an incredible space, uh, speed. Um, I left ING uh, uh, two and a half years ago. So that's my background. Um, I follow you on, on LinkedIn. Um, that's, um, and I try to, to access also the, uh, the meetings from time to time. Um, but that's uh, where I stand for the moment. So, Good. I, I was interesting, interested to learn from you um, what this, uh, this is all about. Uh, on trade finance, uh, in brief, that was both the, the open account and the traditional trade. Um, so what I did. Good. 
Thanks, Thanks Gene, for, for uh, sharing a little bit of your background and great to uh, meet you. And uh, hopefully the rest of the year here, you can uh, join <laughs> us you. and uh, as we figure out where, where we're going to add some value out of all this. Yes, good <laughs> to see it. Thank you. Very much. Good. Sophia, do you have any uh, thoughts that you want to share here? And then we'll go to Michael and then we'll go to Jeff. How's that? Yeah, sure. I mean, personally, um, I'm very interested in use cases, what's going on around the industry. Um, I mean, there's plenty going on, but there's not enough talk about it, in my opinion. Um, and just hearing the challenges that organizations are going through with making blockchain systems a reality, with, with really implementing um, the technology into their solutions, regardless of, of the application. I'd, I'd love to find out some more. Just know what's going on across the industry. Good, good. I, I think uh, I think a lot of people would like to know what's going on. Yeah. It, it feels a little doom and gloom right now, but I don't think that's quite, it, it's not total reality. It's just moment of time there. Uh, so, for sure. And one yeah. thing that's that's big, I guess, right now is just, and it probably always has been, but blockchain versus legacy systems. I mean, it's, Blockchain is being constantly shut down at the moment. Um, and that's because, well, people are talking about blockchain specifically being the problem. I don't think it is that. So, um, yeah, pr almost proving the concept of blockchain, of, of proving why blockchain versus other technologies. I mean, I so strongly believe in it, and I'm sure everyone on this call does as well, but the industry doesn't, or like, or even not just our industry, everywhere. Um, everything I see is just, well, why blockchain? Blockchain is the reason for the failure of many, um, <laughs> many uh, stories we've seen. It, 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 it's, it's an easy uh, article to write if you're a journalist, that's for sure. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. It's well, kind let's of prove it wrong. I mean, yeah. One but, thing I've been uh, I've been trying to organize is a workshop on EDI versus blockchain, right? Uh, what are the costs? What are the processes? Uh, what the what's the speed? Uh, really drilling down into that question. So maybe that's something we can look at too. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. But, Especially but, because I don't know if many of us are very technical. I mean, I'm not, and I only really found out what EDI and API were like in the past year. <laughs> and actually that's quite important when we're talking about blockchain because we're trying to connect systems yeah. right interestingly enough probably two years ago it was right after i started joining this this crowd and got involved uh we did a edi and blockchain session we had a couple companies that had done some work in that area um on it and like maybe what i'll do is i'll i'll uh, i'll put that link if it's still out there um, I'll put it in the wiki for people to look at, and then maybe we could have an updated session on that. I, I kind of like that idea, Eric and Sophia. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Okay. Let me make sure I got my to-do here so I don't forget about it. EDI session. <laughs> you're being recorded, so uh, you're on the hook, man. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Um, one other thought here. Interesting you say you know, Sophia about, you know, blockchain and how to get started and everything. That's one of the things that really got me going in governance because I'm like, okay, why aren't these projects taking off as quickly and as easily, probably easily is probably more part of it, um, as they should. And the conclusion I came to at the time and what got me involved with governance is that all the governance, how do you, how do you work together? There wasn't a good process to do that. It was kind of hey, let's get together in a room. Let's figure out if we can do something here. And it felt like putting some structure around how do you get started would be very effective and helpful to maybe, you know, not have, let's take ASX and Sylvia from ASX is on the call here. You know, Australian Stock Exchange, they started changing out their, they said, hey, we're going to use blockchain and we're going to do settlement and clearing system, a uh, new one. And, when people figured out what was going to happen and they might lose revenue, et cetera, et cetera, all of a sudden, all the people come out of the woodwork and say, no, you shouldn't be doing this. And ultimately the project died uh, just to here at the end of the year. So an example of if they have involved people earlier, 
they probably they may not have had quite the same amount of uh, knives out for themselves as they went along. I'm sure they made some mistakes like every project does along the way, but um, that just to, back to my catalyst statement, why governance I got involved in that. So let's go on here. Uh, who did I say next? I think I said Michael next. I think you did as well. He's ready, ready to roll. And if you look up- I'm Eric, wearing my, up. my Georgia shirt. Oh, geez. <laughs> that was a beat down on Monday. <laughs> it was indeed, yeah. So if, if you, Eric, could you scroll up just a little bit on your screen there? So if you look at this, Eric, or uh, Michael, close to his heart there where it says ISO 8119 for a transportation unit ID. Michael, that, that's his life there. So Michael, uh, well, uh, I just wanted to call out so that you know what Michael is in interested in and you can contact him afterwards, but also Michael will let you share based on what you see here on the projects and what we're talking about here. Well, I, I, I would wanna drive one thing to ground on a question you asked and I didn't hear an answer to. I would just be curious, how many people on the phone are technical? Um, I am Jeff. So uh, I've even coded blockchains, uh, Ethereum using Solidity. So yeah, I know the technical aspects of blockchain, but okay. uh, even before I get to it, I'm sure Tom probably knows a lot of blockchain projects, the failure, I don't know if it's technology or if it's politics. Politics so, should be tough on a blockchain, especially the permission ones. Right, that, that's actually the point I was gonna go towards is I, I'm a big believer in the governance side also, Tom. Um, I actually met with a lady named Dr. Denise McCurdy, who now works for Gartner, and she introduced me to a collaborative blockchain governance model from Ansel and Gash. And the Ansel and Gash research was introduced to me at the same time as Denise was introduced to me as just getting her doctorate degree on blockchain governance, the first one in the country. And Dr. Blockchain, uh, a guy named John Greaves, introduced me to Denise and asked me to be able to meet with her and interview her. And I brought her in as a consultant to work with DFM Data Corp about two years ago. And we baked into a application the collaborative governance model where votes and working groups and steering committees are built inside of a platform as a service. And we basically built it as an Ubuntu instance that allows for deployment in a cloud environment of any flavor and can basically flow connections of data, of hashes, of of what we call TUIDs, those transport unit identifiers amongst the parties that have deployed one of these networked solutions. And it's very much like Hyperledger and, and blockchain, but it doesn't necessarily have where everybody stores a copy of the full set of the data because that's one of the Too concerns <laughs> in this space for everybody to be able to do. You, you really need a trusted utility that is a governing partner that can sit in the middle of this and it can't be them. It has to be them managing the group of members like a, a pipeline for the gas companies. They all share the ownership of it because of the fact that they're all pumping the same thing through it. And how many gallons of it you got is how many gallons you got, but they share the expense and forming that sort of an entity that can be owned by the industry that has a project plan that identifies the industry participants are engaged and vested and bought in. That's what it's going to take for projects in blockchain to be successful. I mean, one of my first project management books was the Harvard Business School, Managing Projects Big and Small. And it's, it's a, a 40 page book, but it's a reference manual of if you don't do the homework and identify who the champions of the project are 
and who the stakeholders of the project are and what the defined outcomes of the project are, then it's difficult to be able to build feedback loops that are meaningful. And I think in today's world, we really need to get to the, the human experience of being able to have a social, I can update the information when it's convenient for me to be able to do in a platform, but that my voice is also heard and my confidential information is protected. And there needs to be a buffer kind of on both sides. So my just one last minute and then I'll kind of shut up and, and open for feedback. But the piece that we built with this Ubuntu environment, we called the anonymizer because it has a translation layer that basically allows for the governance to establish what the language for the canonical is. And then the parties to be able to just write an interface to that canonical and from that canonical and not have to really put all of their data any place, just simply to be able to label it in a consistent way so that from the bill of lading, from the purchase order, we can extract the unique identifiers if we all look at the same pieces of information and organize it the same way. And that's the standard that I've been working on with ISO. So, so Michael, out of the three things, Eric, if you could scroll up real fast there. I don't, I don't know if you voted yet here. Where, where, where would you say you think we, we could uh, make the most difference in driving forward the value of blockchain and supply chain and trade finance? So, so I already responded. I actually think why I was respondent one, because the moment that I saw it, I responded to it. And, and, <laughs> okay, um, I, we'll, we'll, we'll give you pride a place then. You, you, you guys are, are, are really right, sniffing around the right things. There's, you, you really are, you're looking for how to establish what a meaningful project is to be able to do. And that requires the governance and the use cases. And the governance and the use cases are, are where the foundation for project successes take place. So those were the two places that, that I voted on. I, I think they're the things that, that unlock the opportunities uh, I'll share with you that before, before I ever started DFM Data Corp, I actually started a company called Block Know How. And Block Know How was working with Hyperledger 1.1 and then 1.2 and then 1.3 and 1.4. And I built a deployment system where I've deployed over 10,000 Hyperledger solutions in testing. Because we built an instrument that allowed people to just go in and basically pick the number of nodes, identify which ones are, are related to which others and identify the and launch. And it actually went to AWS and launched the machines and pushed them up into the cloud and we can turn them back off. And it was a very early test of Hyperledger 4. But when Hyperledger jumped to 2.0 from 1.4, it was um, a disconnect. And my team kind of, of separated from from, yeah. from that work. So I, I got a little frustrated with the Hyperledger side, but have always stayed engaged with, you know, it's a, it's a cycle. You, you learn and sometimes you, sometimes the plane crashes and you got to yeah. put the pieces back together and take off again. Well, so let's, Michael, see, let's see where we can fly this year. So Michael, just a, just Jeff, just a question. When you, when you put the, all those test systems out there um, by default, what was the consensus mechanism that you plugged in? So I had um, a group called Kilroy Blockchain that worked with a consent model. And the consent model is each of the users of the community saying the rules are good enough. My voice has been heard. Okay. So that was not an issue in any of those with, with any of the partners you had looking at those test cases. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There were lots of, of I mean, again, what we're talking about is rules and identities. And I mean, the, the pointers of moving the, the full packets of information, we're big believers in off-chain data storing in secure locations where the only right. people that it's truly so need yeah. it. Yeah, it's just, I mean, why, why are we pushing all of this around everywhere? We need pointers. And the pointers have to be established in a meaningful way. And, and just because you're asking, Jeff, I'll share that the TUI standard is made up of several other standards. So like the ISO time and date stamp is 8601. And if we concatenate the ISO 8601 standard next to the natural location identifier, which is ISO 
8000-118 for the origin and for the destination and use a company identifier, which is ISO 8000-116, the ALEI, you can add a PO number to that and have a globally unique identifier for every single shipment on the planet where you basically just say, here's the recipe to be able to make a TUID. We all have the same information for it. We just don't have a standard way to format it so that it's in a sequence that everybody who knows what the sequence is can say, well, that's the origin, that's the destination, that's the status, and this is who it's assigned to. But we've yeah. never really defined that, and that's what we were work we have been working on on the ISO eight thousand side. Thanks, Michael. So, very aligned with what you guys are doing, and and if I can support with, you know, technology and 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 um, experience and you know, it, again, use cases, governance, uh, I'm in. You, you'll get my attention and my time. Good. Jeff, you want to uh, share some thoughts, which you, you've, you've heard a lot of uh, different thoughts from folks on the line here. And we welcome you, Jeff, maybe you could introduce yourself a little bit. Okay. Um, so I'm actually located in um, Chicago. So I'm in the federal <coughs> Chicago branch, not DC. Um, so I worked in the uh, oil industry for decades, also all, um, all aspects of it. And so, um, I was there a long, long time with a very big, very one of the big majors, the giant majors. And um, so my last 20 some years there was all on IT. Um, but they sent me back to school to get an IT degree. But um, probably the last five, six years, we started looking at blockchains. Um, and so the blockchains were focused on really uh, what kind of, this was a use case around material movement globally. And so that is a very complex um, part of the oil drilling business. When you're talking offshore, when you're moving parts, source parts around the world, um, we looked at Hyperledger because of the chain code inside it put some government rules in there around imports and exports. Very tough to do when you're putting up a $10 billion offshore well somewhere, let's say Angola. Um, they have strict um, local source rules but they may not have the quality that you need. Also, um, you move something over there and they find out that one of the pieces of electrical wire was made in North Korea and that's on the banned export list. And so we're trying to do that all in chain code. Um, the problem that we ran into is it got too complex too fast. And so we never even got down to how to do consensus among different parties, governments, um, suppliers, um, and the oil companies. And so, um, that's my background, all in that. Again, I've coded up Ethereum using Solidity. Um, I just don't find blockchain really, don't laugh when I say this, but I don't think technically it's that complex. I don't know. The, the, the crypto piece of it, I, I get, but when you have permission on the blockchains where crypto doesn't come into play, I don't understand the the fretting around it or people steering away from being scared. I mean, you put up a, a traditional database, I find that much more complex than putting up a blockchain, but um, so being. Um, yeah, I just think blockchain is still uh, an elixir for a lot of people. I was offered um, less than a year ago uh, to be the NFL's blockchain st strategy developer working with the, um, the uh, president of the NFL. The NFL is not a big organization They're based in New York, but they still have an issue. They could not, they had a consulting firm that didn't know, there's a blockchain consulting firm, you may laugh at this, they didn't know anything about blockchain. It's just been very bizarre. And their issue again is you got this NFL central office, which is a licensing group. Then you got 32 teams out there who have their own ideas around what their blockchain should look like. Because again, as you probably know, in that space, NFTs are huge. And billions can be made on NFTs, but you need a blockchain solution to manage an NFT. So the NBA is very far ahead. And NFL is still um, is under a lot of heat because they don't have NFTs on the tickets and things of that nature. So they were asking me to come in and be their blockchain strategist. So um, I worked there for three days and quit. <laughs> because the politics were should, should, we, should we? Okay, you're, you're going to explain to us. Inquiring minds want to know. Well, it, 
you know, I don't want to work that many hours. First of all, again, I, I, I left. And so I don't, I don't need that. I don't need that job. I don't need a job anymore. <laughs> and um, you're looking at to do that job properly. You're looking at 80 hours a week, huge amount of money to do that job. But um, the politics, I talked to us, uh, they gave me every single phone number to contact their IT head and every single football team. And um, everybody had their own ideas about what this should look like. And when it comes to NFTs, they have revenue sharing. So they had to buy some of the blockchain solution on board that I proposed. But when it came to NFTs, they wanted to own those. It just became a political mess. And so I said, no thanks. Um, and I just, to this day, look at it and say, I think their issue with blockchain was just, they, they look at blockchain and think crypto. Now with FTX, oh, that's, that's crypto. Blockchain, that's a disaster. And you, you just, this is their IT folks. <laughs> so um, it, it's frustrating. The media is the worst. The media is Are you sure you don't live in, the, in Italy, Jeff, by the way? Because this rings me more than one bell. <laughs> I don't know. I really, really, it's something quite familiar to me <laughs> in my years of seeing. Yeah. Oh goodness. Uh, I thought Bro was different, but I. Yeah. Well. The other the other company that tried to hire me was Amazon, and Amazon, Amazon worldwide, is clueless about the blockchain. They they were going to make their own coin at one time, which became a. You probably I don't know if you remember that. That became a disaster. Um, they're still looking at blockchain, but um, they just seem to flop. You know. The, I think you guys hit it on at the beginning. You hit it on the head. This is all about governance. It's not tech, technical yet. It's all about governance. And so that is an issue with, um, I work for BP. So um, uh, no matter what you say about oil companies, BP, that's got to be one of the best companies on earth to work for, <laughs> with the benefits and where they treat people. But um, governance is just um, an issue with NFL governance, Amazon governance. Um, yeah, that just seems to be such a core to okay. those blockchain solutions is governance. And it's, I, I it's, it's governance and feedback loops. You, you yeah. have to be able to get it so that, that the parties what? feel yeah, invested. Yeah, yeah. just I'll keep it open, please. I need a credit card. Yeah, so um, right away, the NFL said, well, we've been exploring with our consulting firm the fact that we're going to have to issue an NFL coin to, to put our NFT solution in. And who told you that? Why would you need an NFL coin? No, you don't. You got a permission blockchain. <laughs> and it's just so, this is their co consulting firm in Miami somewhere. But anyway. Okay. Um, yeah. My so interest is really around the governance um, in use cases where governance can get up front and um, handle these misconceptions around blockchain. Okay. Your, uh, I guess a quick question, a little bit back to Ayan's uh, thought. When you were doing the ma material movement use case, and I know I didn't get there, was there any money involved in it or you just focused more on the material movement? Is that to me? Or, uh, yeah, that's that's a question for you, Jeff. Yeah, uh, Both. Okay, good, good. So you both. did have the money and the, uh, and the yes. actual physical yeah. good as you're moving yep. it. I understand. And, that. and the reason why they have to do that, because there's so much money involved, um, currency fluctuations can impact a project of these magnitudes. When you're talking about something that's a five or $10 billion project, what currency yeah. is, is are being used, depending on what region you are. And so they have to do a lot with the, they actually do a lot with the trade finance part of it, but currency fluctuations can really impact um, the, the profitability of a project. Yeah. Good. Yeah, especially in developing countries, Jeff. This yeah. is one thing that we should be exploring too. You see, I've been massively exposed to Africa, Middle East. Well, I was Angola. The specific one I'm talking about was the uh, offshore Angola. Yeah, I think about Tunisia. I think about you see Algeria, where you have massive mm -hmm. projects on the structure, also trade yeah. funds. And you see the projects are lying behind because of fluctuations of the currency of so this. So there maybe it's also good space for those kind of topics that you mentioned that could yeah. help in some way in sorting out the troubles. Mm -hmm. You don't you would never get a documentary credit unless you have all and much more than the total amount on the deal. 
frozen and right. bank accounts. Even a double of the total amount. So that's an issue. Think about the small and medium companies down that they have awesome projects that they never managed to finalize because mm -hmm. of steering oils. So that yeah. again, this rings more than one bell to my ears. Okay. So so I know we're at the top of the hour here. So and we usually we try to finish because everyone's got a lot of other things to do here. This was never this this was intended to be an open discussion and it worked out perfectly. Sorry again, we got going a little bit late with the we'll figure that out for next time uh, with things here, both on the LinkedIn side as well as within uh, Hyperledger, so that we have the right Zoom link uh, for or others don't clap, get onto our Zoom link. How's that um, out there? So great, great input from uh, different folks. Hopefully it sparks some thoughts. I would look for us to get together again um, on January, what's 14 days from now, January 26th. Um, 26, yeah, the next yeah, meeting same, is, is- Same time. Same, yeah, same time as two days. Hopefully same yeah. link, Tom, because we were on the right side. Yeah, we were on the right link, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So, so I we guess we go, um, as, soon, as soon as ready, by the way, let's, let's upload the meeting recording on the same media so I can reshare with the community on LinkedIn. It's the right yes. place for bringing yeah. attendance. And as we've noticed, we're a small group today, but dedicated professional that can bring good topics on the table to go further with this. By the way, we have, if I'm not wrong, we have Jonathan, my friend Jonathan from UK. Just join. Ciao, Jonathan. Nice to see you, by the way, on the phone. Yeah. And uh, next time, Malia, as well as uh, Jean, if you want to uh, share some thoughts here, I know you guys were kind of more in listen mode initially yeah. here. You're welcome to put things in. And I guess yeah. the other thing I'd ask is uh, please share on your LinkedIn or whatever this survey here. You know, if our goal is to get 100 responses out there, it, it'd, be help, it'd be helpful for a little bit of extra push. And then hopefully in the 26th, we can make some decisions where we want to go and uh, what then we can start talking about what people want to do in order to, to make that thing a reality here. Um, whatever yep. we decide to do out there. Eric, yep. Andrea, anything else? No, uh, stick to us. As Tom said, this year is going to be a little slightly different compared to what we have been doing during the last three years. Less speeches by industry stakeholders and yeah. more activities within the group yeah. we will need a group to stick together consolidate bring more of dedicated professional to bring some results this is a challenge of 2023 and i would love to to get to some results and i think what also since we didn't have daniela on this time do the mix up We'll have Daniela, uh, she said she'll come on next time on the 26th. So we'll spend the first few minutes ha having her give us a give us a couple thoughts on 2023 and Hyperledger overall. So with that, I'll close out. Again, thanks everybody for uh, sharing your background, your thoughts, your interests across the board here. It sounds like we're kind of in the right area with these three. Now let's, let's, let's get a few more people to uh, add their thoughts to it. Appreciate it from everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank well, thanks, everyone. Have a nice day ahead. Bye, See everybody. you soon. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.